All right, let's just jump right in. The wireless tech that we use for, well, everything. Our phones, Wi-Fi, you name it, it all feels so futuristic, right? But what if I told you that this entire amazing system is built on an idea that's over a century old and that its biggest secrets are hiding in plain sight? I mean, really think about it for a second. We've got rovers on Mars, but you still can't get a good cell signal in a parking garage. Or you walk into the next room and your Wi-Fi just dies. Dropped calls, that spinning wheel of death on your video. How is it that with all our incredible tech, our wireless world is still so, I don't know, fragile? The source of all this frustration, it's not a software update you missed. It's actually a story. It's the story of how radio was invented that we've all been told for decades. And, well, it might just be the wrong story. So let's start with that official version, the one you probably heard in school. It's a nice, clean story. A story about one single brilliant inventor. You see, over in Russia and other parts of the world, May 7th is a huge deal. It's Radio Day, and it all celebrates this one guy, physicist Alexander Popov. He did this public demo of a radio receiver back in 1895, and boom, history books in that part of the world basically say he's the father of radio. It's a great story, but it's just not that simple. Because here's the thing, this whole idea of a lone genius having a eureka moment and inventing radio, it's a total myth. The reality was so much messier and honestly, way more interesting. It was this global race, a massive, decades-long project with brilliant minds all over the world chipping away at the same problem. I mean, wireless communication didn't just pop into existence in 1895. This timeline goes way, way back. You've got Mahlon Loomis in the 1860s, sending signals between mountains with kites. Amos Dolber got a patent for a wireless system in the 1880s. And of course, there's Nikola Tesla, who demonstrated all the basic principles of radio in 1893. That's two full years before Popoff's famous demo. So Popoff's work was absolutely a key piece of the puzzle, but he was writing a huge wave of discovery that had been building for a long time. So this is really the heart of it. Radio wasn't so much an invention as it was a discovery. It was this natural phenomenon that dozens of people were all zeroing in on at the exact same time. The real story isn't about one hero. It's about a massive shared human effort. But you know, this isn't just some boring history lesson. The story we chose to tell ended up defining the very technology we use today, for good and for bad. Which brings us right back to our original question. If this technology was so game-changing, why does it still feel so limited? Why are we all still hunting for outlets and praying for a strong Wi-Fi signal? Is this really the best we can do? And hey, let's give credit where it's due. The tech that pioneers like Popov and Marconi locked onto was incredible for the time. I mean, he wasn't just playing around in a lab. He was building real, practical systems. By 1899, he was getting a 30-mile range for ships at sea. That's a huge deal for a Navy. The system worked, no doubt about it, and it spread like wildfire. But it worked using a very, very specific kind of signal. And this right here, this is the source of all our modern problems. The tech we standardized, the one based on these continuous alternating radio waves, is fundamentally delicate. It's like a tiny ripple in a pond. It's so easily disturbed. These waves are super prone to static and interference from everything. Bad weather, other gadgets, you name it. They're so weak that they get soaked up by walls and buildings, which is exactly why your Wi-Fi signal vanishes. They fade out so fast that we had to build this insane global network of towers and satellites just to bounce the signal along. We basically built our entire modern world on a technology that was a compromise from day one. But what if there was another way? a totally different kind of wireless energy that those early pioneers kind of skipped over in their race to get a working system. A type of signal that, get this, nature uses all the time. Okay, so here's where I see the two paths, the fork in the road. On the left, that's what we have now, RF waves. They're based on alternating current, AC. Think of it as a continuous ripple that pushes and pulls back and forth. It loses energy with every single wiggle, which is why it's so inefficient. But on the right, that's the alternative, pulsed energy. This is a direct current, or DC impulse. It's not a ripple, it's a shockwave. A single, powerful one-way punch of energy. All of it fired in one direction in one instant. If you want to really feel the difference in power, just think about a lightning strike. That's not a gentle wave. It's a colossal, instantaneous discharge. Or think about an EMP, an electromagnetic pulse. It's not a radio signal, it's this massive, one-time burst of raw energy that can knock out electronics for miles. 
That's the kind of power we're talking about. This quote just nails it, doesn't it? The entire history of our wireless world has been about trying to make a whisper just a little bit louder, and we've gotten really, really good at it. But at the end of the day, we're still just working with a whisper. Meanwhile, nature's own wireless signal is a thunderclap. So the real question is, can we finally learn how to harness that thunder? So what does this all mean for us for our future? It means we might need to challenge our most basic ideas about what wireless tech is and what it could really be. Back in 1878, a professor told one of his students, a young man named Max Planck, not to even bother going into physics. Why? Because he said the field was basically done. Everything important had been discovered. Of course, that student, Max Planck, went on to invent quantum theory and completely rewrite our understanding of the universe. It's just an incredible reminder that settled science can sometimes be the biggest thing blocking the next breakthrough. Does that attitude maybe sound a little familiar? Have we basically decided that wireless tech is a finished story? That all that's left to do is make our little alternating waves a tiny bit faster with 5G or 6G or whatever comes next? Have we stopped searching for the thunderclap because we're just so focused on amplifying that whisper? So here's the thought I wanna leave you with. The real history of radio shows us that the path we took wasn't the only path available. And maybe, just maybe, the next great wireless revolution isn't 6G or 7G, just a slightly polished version of the same old idea. Maybe the real revolution is waiting for us way back at that fork in the road by rediscovering the incredible untapped power of the pulse that's been right here all around us this whole time. All right, I guess we are done with physics and history and who knows, maybe future for this time. But if you are hungry for more content, feel free to just let the video roll and let's get down to earth and, well, if we still have to use this legacy wave radio technology for our mobile internet and Wi-Fi, let's talk about VPNs. Let's talk about something that affects every single one of us every single day, our online privacy. There's a constant invisible battle happening for your personal data. And today we're going to look at a powerful tool designed to put you right back in control. It's a creepy question, isn't it? Every time you click, search, or send a message, that information travels across this huge open network. And without any protection, your activity, your location, even your device's unique address, it can all be visible to your internet provider, to advertisers, and yeah, to people with bad intentions. And this isn't just some paranoid what-if scenario, this is real. Check this out. A staggering 31% of all data breaches are caused by things like phishing and stolen credentials. That's almost a third of major security disasters happening just because someone's private info got out. So what can you do about it? How do you shield yourself? Well, this is where the hero of our story comes in, the VPN. And honestly, the best way to think about a VPN is like your own personal armored truck for the internet. Instead of just sending your data out in the open where anyone can see it, you're locking it inside a secure vehicle that nobody can peek into. So let's get a little more specific. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. And what it does is it creates a totally private encrypted connection for you over the public internet. Think of it like building a secret invisible tunnel for all your data to travel through. It makes your online life your business and nobody else's. Okay, so how does this whole armored truck thing actually work? It's a few simple steps. First, your device, your phone, your laptop, whatever, connects to a special server run by your VPN provider. Instantly, all your internet data gets scrambled up, or what we call encrypted. This scrambled data then travels through that secure tunnel to the VPN server, which then sends it on to its final destination. And in that process, your real IP address gets hidden and swapped with the servers. So poof, your identity and your location are completely masked. So what makes this digital lock so incredibly strong? Well, the best VPNs on the market use an encryption standard called AES-256. To give you some perspective, this is the exact same level of encryption that's used by governments, by militaries, by banks to protect their most top secret information. It scrambles your data so thoroughly that it's, for all practical purposes, completely uncrackable. The difference here is, well, it's night and day. Without a VPN, your online life is pretty much an open book for anyone to read. But with a VPN, it's like a securely sealed letter. You go from being totally exposed to being completely protected. It's that simple. 
All right, so that's the theory. Now let's see what this looks like in practice. We're gonna take a peek inside a real world example, NordVPN, which is one of the most highly regarded services out there to see how all these principles come together to create a full on security tool. And hey, you don't have to just take my word for it. The tech experts over at PCMag actually named it their editor's choice for 2024, and they specifically called out its huge server network and its super strong security. You know, the key things we were just talking about. Let's talk about that network for a second. We're talking over 8,400 servers. Now you might be thinking, okay, cool number, but why does that matter to me? Well, it's actually a huge deal. The more servers there are and the closer one is to you, the faster and more reliable your connection is gonna be. It prevents slowdowns because you're not getting jammed up with a ton of other people on the same server. And those servers, they're spread out across more than 167 locations all around the world. This gives you some incredible flexibility. You can connect through a server in a totally different country to watch geoblock streaming content, or even get better prices on things like flights or online shopping. It's pretty cool. And here's something that's absolutely crucial for, well, pretty much everyone these days. A single account can protect up to 10 of your devices at the same time. We're talking your laptop, your phone, your tablet, your work computer, all of them, all secured all at once. But here's the thing, a top tier service today does way more than just hide your IP address. The real power now comes from all these integrated features that work together to give you a complete digital security suite that just hums along quietly in the background. For instance, a lot of modern services now have something like Threat Protection Pro. This is where we move beyond just privacy and into active, hardcore security. It's designed to stop threats before they can even get to your device. A tool like this works on a massive scale. We're talking about blocking billions with a B of intrusive ads every single month, but it's so much more than an ad blocker. It also acts like your personal digital bodyguard, automatically scanning files you download from malware and stopping you from ever lending on a malicious website in the first place. And then there's this other layer of proactive defense. You've probably heard of the dark web, right? It's these hidden corners of the internet where stolen data gets bought and sold. Well, a feature like Dark Web Monitor is designed to be your lookout in those sketchy places. So here's how it works, and it's pretty brilliant. It's constantly scanning these dark web marketplaces for your personal info. If your email, or even worse, your social security number ever shows up in a data breach, you get an instant alert. This gives you a critical head start to go change your passwords and lock down your accounts before criminals can do any real damage. So you see, when you start combining all these features, you're not just protecting one little browsing session. You're actually building a comprehensive digital shield that covers your entire online life, no matter what device you happen to be using. And when I say every device, I really mean every device. We're talking your desktop computer, your phone, your web browser, your smart TV, even your PlayStation or Xbox. A good VPN service has dedicated apps and super simple setups for basically every platform you can imagine. And here's the ultimate pro tip for just total set it and forget it security. You can install the VPN directly onto your Wi-Fi router. What this does is it automatically encrypts and protects the traffic of every single device connected to your home network, your smart speakers, your security cameras, your guests' phones, everything. It is true 360 degree protection. Which brings us right back to that first question, but now with a whole new light. Is your digital life truly your own? Well, with tools like these available, the answer can finally be yes. It's really about taking back control and making sure that your world online belongs to you and only you. Thanks for watching to the end of this video. If you want more content like this, there is a playlist that should be popping up right now. Stay tuned for more. I've also made this free video for you with solutions for creativity, financial strength, and online security. I hope you'll enjoy this offer as well as all the others featured on my channel. And that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and until next time, this is Hermalau Tube. My name is Konstantin, reminding you that your interest is the current that powers this channel.